Hi, my name is Dr. John Birkenbosch. I'm a co-chair of the Pediatric PAD Task Force and co-author of the 2022 SCCM Clinical Practice Guidelines on the Prevention and Management of Pain, Agitation, Neuromuscular Blockade, and Delirium in the Critically Ill Pediatric Patient with Consideration of the ICU Environment and Early Mobility otherwise known as the PEDS PANDEM guidelines. While the guidelines includes or identify seven unique domains relating to the provision of comfort care, it should be noted that these domains are highly interrelated. As such, a discussion of the highlights of these guidelines is best started by noting some of the key themes that cross these domains. The most widely found theme is the importance of assessing a domain, be it pain, sedation, withdrawal, or delirium, both frequently and using a validated scoring tool. While we acknowledge that most practitioners are already performing these assessments, the available literature suggests that validation of the tools used for these assessments is less common. As such, within these guidelines, we've included recommendations of validated tools within each of these domains. Another common theme is that comfort provision should be multimodal specifically incorporating non-pharmacologic interventions such as music therapy, bundling of care, enhancing sleep hygiene, and facilitating parental involvement in their child's care. Individually or in combination, addition of these interventions is beneficial in reducing exposure to sedative and analgesic agents, facilitating early mobility implementation, and reducing the development and or severity of delirium. While we recognize that not all interventions may be possible, we encourage the teams to consider what is feasible within their individual environments. The importance of protocolized care is another theme we wish to underscore. For sedation and analgesia management, protocols should include the, include the routine assignment of a target sedation depth, as well as a daily reassessment of that target depth based on the patient's clinical progression. Protocols should also facilitate an efficient mechanism for medication titration, often best done by the bedside nurse, as that is the caregiver most commonly performing sedation and comfort assessments. The use of protocolized sedative and analgesic weaning is also suggested as this practice has been associated with more rapid drug discontinuation in addition to less withdrawal development. Practitioners today have multiple choices regarding available sedative agents. While current literature did not allow this task force to make many specific recommendations regarding sedative choice, evidence does support suggesting dexmedetomidine-based sedation in the cardiac surgical population, both to facilitate earlier postoperative extubation and to reduce the incidence of postoperative tachydysrhythmias. Recent years have seen a marked increase in our appreciation of the impact of delirium on the critically ill child. Given the strong association between benzodiazepine exposure and delirium development, we suggest minimizing the use of benzodiazepine-based sedation. We also recommend against the routine use of haloperidol or atypical antipsychotic agents to either prevent delirium development or reduce its duration. In reality, Available literature only supports a possible role for these agents in patients with refractory delirium in order to facilitate weaning of other sedatives and weaning from mechanical ventilation. It has been our privilege to present these initial PAD guidelines to you. We actively invite continued conversation regarding this important topic, and we encourage the performance of additional studies that may further inform the highest quality comfort practices for our critically ill children.